We start with the simple handheld hammer. Then we look at treadle hammers, drop hammers, and power hammers. But what do they all have in common? Each one is designed to pulverize, reform, squash, bend, mold, and reshape the original piece of metal. But why? It's because the smith, the artisan, the master craftsman, the creator, wants the metal in a different shape in order that it will perform the desired function, be it merely decorative or highly functional. The metal, in its as-found state, may look very different to what is in the smith's imagination. The iron will resist the hammer blows to the best of its mechanical ability. It must be heated in the forge repeatedly, and when it is glowing brightly, it will be beaten again and again repeatedly. If the iron could feel pain, what would hurt it the most? The mighty fire of the furnace or the repeated hammer blows? As the iron cools, it yields less and less to the weight of the hammer, resisting more and more as it cools and as it gets colder. If it gets cold enough, the very hammer blow will smash it to a thousand shafts. At this point, it would have to go into the fiery furnace and be heated even hotter than the forge until it reaches its white-hot liquid state, where it at least into its component parts, it would weld itself together and become as one again. See how the iron has a natural tendency to resist reshaping. See how the iron has to be beaten under the great heat and suffer many hammer blows before it yields to the image in the smith's mind. Men can be likened uh, to stubborn iron. We are so reluctant to change. Why do we have to suffer the flames of the blacksmith's forge? Why must we cringe under the strong smith's arm and his heavy hammer? Why do we resist God and his purposes and plans for our lives? We all know what we should be like. It is written in our childish conscience. So why do we refuse to do good? Why are we so self-absorbed, so unloving, so different from Father God to the blacksmith's thoughts and the perfect image he has for us? The imagination he has for us. As the iron on his anvil is what he wants us to be like, to be like him. Why is it that we do not long to fulfil his desire? Why do we resist every hammer blow? Why won't we simply accept his purpose and his plan for our lives? The reason, of course, is that since our forefather Adam sinned in the garden, the paradise of God, by dis disobeying his God, his creator, he relinquished his God-given authority to have dominion in this world. He relinquished it to the serpent, the devil. Man is now subject to Satan and under the curse of Satan's kingdom. We're not under God's kingdom. Even if his heart is inclined towards God, man finds himself living under the devil's law of corruption and death. Since Adam rejected God's rule and submitted to, uh, to Satan's kingdom, he and his descendants are under God's curse, because Satan and his kingdom is under God's curse. This means that you are under a curse. Almighty God is the opposite in all things to that of the devil. 
God is love and wants to save you. He is continually reaching out to man. He's reaching out to you. Sometimes there is that still, small voice in your conscience. Sometimes you are beaten on the anvil under Almighty God's loving hammer. Pain shatters your body, your mind, your soul, your circumstances. God is hitting you that you might be saved. Do not resist the blows of God. They all come down with great love, that they might mould, bend and change you. That they might straighten you and make you neat for the Master's use. God is good and wants you to be good, like him. You can never achieve such a high ideal. No man has lived a sinless life. The righteous law of God clearly states that the soul that sins shall die. This is justice. This is reasonable. God, in his great mercy, knowing that no man could measure up to the high standard of perfection, sent his only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to die in your place, to die in our place and for us, that we might be redeemed, that he might redeem us and pay the full cost of our sin, to suffer and die in our place, which is what he did on the cross at Calvary. All you have to do is to believe the truth of the gospel, the good news. Ask Jesus Christ, the Lord, to be the Lord of your life, and you will be saved. Everyone who really seeks him, finds him. Now why suffer needless hammer blows? Look to the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. And you may ask, will the hammer blows stop if I become a Christian? And I have to say, no. But they will be different. And you will have the confidence that they are truly for your good and are the final changes to make you as the great artisan in heaven wants you to be. I encourage you to pray. Seek the Lord and you shall find him. God is real as millions upon millions of Christians throughout the world and throughout history can attest and declare to be true. God is alive. Amen.